Hello everyone. We're winding near the end of the basic lighting tutorials. The rest of it's going to be taken care of with the Millennium Falcon. Now, what I have left is the timing circuits. Before I get into the timing circuits, I need to go through how to read basic circuit diagrams. Okay? I'm going to put a good website with the different symbols at the bottom of the video, like always. If you guys over at Scale Model Addict, I'm just going to put a link right there with the video. Um, we don't use that many different symbols when working with models. We're not into the full-blown electronics idea, you know, where I'm going to build a radio or something else. All I'm trying to do is get some blinky lights in my model or even some steady lights. And we don't need to go completely crazy. So we need five or six, maybe seven different symbols for what we're doing. First one's a resistor. I'm going to put all the pictures of everything right over here. That's why i got this big blank space here. So the first one's a resistor. And this is what it looks like in circuit diagrams. The next one's a capacitor. Okay, and that's this is what it looks like in circuit diagrams. Resistors and capacitors are important. Resistors because they limit the voltage across LEDs so they're not fried. Capacitors are used to get the timing chips working properly. We'll explain that in a minute. I'm, that's going to get explained in this video. Why not now? Okay, capacitors are used to get timing chips working properly because a capacitor is like a small battery. It has two parallel plates, you put a charge on the plates. Okay, once the plates are charged, no current passes through the plates, no electricity flows. Then you got to discharge the plates and then electricity can flow. The time required for charging and discharging of this capacitor is governed by the capacitor itself, how big it is, and the resistor. The resistor and the capacitor together control the timing of the chip. That's why when I want to set a certain blink rate, I vary the resistor. Varying a capacitor isn't such a good idea. They do make variable rate capacitors. They're expensive. They're not good. They don't work well, from what I understand. Some of you electronics buffs probably have a different opinion on that. But from what I can tell, they make variable rate resistors called potentiometers real simple to work with, or rheostats, that's another name for them, real simple to work with. I'll show you one while I'm working with the timing chips. Um, the variable rate capacitors are not so simple to work with, so from everything I see, we fix the value of the capacitor and vary the resistance to do our different timings. So we have the resistor, we have the capacitor. Up next is going to be a diode. It's right there. A diode is very much like an LED. LED is light emitting diode. What diodes do is they restrict the direction in which current can flow. If you put a diode up and it says current can only go that way, current only goes that way. It won't go back this way. Okay? Diodes we won't see very often. We're going to see it on the 555 timing chip, not the 4060 CMOS. Okay? So we won't really deal with diodes too much, but it, they will show, so that's why I'm going over it. Speaking of timing chips, we have to talk about the timing chips themselves. So here's an example of a timing chip. You'll notice as a notch on it on this end, that notch is to help you locate pin number one. Okay, I'm not going to go through what the different pins mean and what they do. You're going to read up the, on that all on your own. I'm going to put an article at the bottom of the 555 timing chip, a really good article on the different pins and what they do on a 555 timer. I haven't, the only way I'm going to find that on the CMOS is to get a spec sheet. I'll put a link at the bottom of the CMOS, two links at the bottom of the CMOS. One of them will have a link there for looking at the spec sheet for the CMOS. I'm not going to get into that. That's not my purpose here tonight. Just wanted, you want to know where pin 1 is, pin 2 is, pin 3 is, pin 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 if you're doing the 555. The 4060 CMOS has 16 pins and you're going to know what certain pins are on it. Okay, when I get to that. Now, we also to read the spaghetti of a typical circuit diagram like this one. We're going to need to know when wires are crossing over each other and when they're soldered together. So this is what it looks like when the wires cross. And this is what it looks like when you solder them together. Okay? So having shown all that, this is going to be the basic video on reading circuit diagrams. All right, I'm going to stop there. Um, there's links at the bottom of the video for further reading. 
There's a couple of good articles on the internet on reading circuit diagrams. I'm going to let you go off and learn it on your own. I will explain my circuit diagrams that I'm putting up, okay? The ones I've drawn myself. I'll explain what I'm doing with them. But I want to get into the timing chips. Then I don't want to sit here and explain circuit diagrams for too long. So this video is going to be short. I hope to get this video up and the 4060 timing chip video up pretty quickly tonight. So there you go. I'll be back with uh, the 4060 timing chip video. I'm going to do the 555 video separate and then I'll come back with a conclusion video. So we got three more after this video and I'm done with the basics. We're going to get into the Millennium Falcon. We're going to get her lit. Hopefully by then I'll have the Brock Erie Cruiser done and Desert Hawks done. I'm not trying to get them painted before I get in the Millennium Falcon. I'm just trying to get them built. Once they're built, I know I'll paint them. Okay, I just don't want them to turn into shelf queens where they just sit on the shelf and sit on the shelf and I look at them and go, boy, I wish I'd finished that. I have enough of those already and I don't want to add to them. Some of you probably have noticed Deslock's Command Cruiser is pretty much done. I, it needs a little bit of touch up and then I can paint, put a primer coat on it. So it's just really the Brock here would slow me up and it's really close. We'll get some videos up of those in the next week or two. But anyhow, let me digress. Let me quit digressing. Let's get into the 4060. That'll be the next video.